One of the biggest debates around cancer is the question, is it created by bad luck or is it created by our choices and our environment? And a few months ago, a group of researchers came forward saying almost two thirds of cancer came from just sheer bad luck. But now there's new research contradicting this, completely saying that that's not the case, that almost 80% of all cancers, uh, cases, Nick, actually could be prevented if those getting the disease were changing their lifestyle, they were changing the way they go about mainly smoking, drinking, and eating. Those are the three things, but also the place where you live. If you're close to sources of radiation, the pollution where you live, and different factors, those are even more important than what they call the natural uh, degeneration of the cells within the body. Right, so a lot of it comes down to your decision making, but at the yes. same time, um, it looks like at least the direction that we're going in, it'll have less and less to do with those decisions because you won't, you don't really have a choice. I mean, it seems like in 2015, and if you're in a big city, you're going to be uh, breathing in pollution. You can't, you can't avoid You'll that. You'll be surrounded by radiation. You can be surrounded by radiation. Um, look at the the, the meat that uh, this country thinks is okay to give to its people, filled with all sorts of antibiotics and other terrible things. These processed foods. We seem to, uh, you know, be having less and less of a choice here, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, smoking, drinking, you don't have to do those the, things. The but. evidence. Right. And, you know, lately we, we've been reported on how red meat and processed meat now, they're one of the top, uh, they're at the top level of cancer-inducing substances or practices. Uh, in January, a report in the journal Science tried to explain why some tissues were millions of times more vulnerable to developing cancer than others, and their response was, again, because of the substances that you introduce into your body. And I think this is really important because it stresses the, not only the risk, but at the same time the empowerment that humans have at the time of making decisions. If you uh, eat well, mm -hmm. green vegetables, if you eat fresh, not processed food, you have a higher chance. But what they're saying is that there's no way for you, regardless of what you do, regardless that you live a life where no toxin touches your body, everything is non-GMO, everything is perfect and expensive, you might get cancer. So there's no way out of it. It's a natural process. It happens when one of the body's own stem cells just go rogue and start dividing on, on, on chaos, uh, much like Donald Trump. <laughs> you know, what, what angers me the most about all of this stuff is, you know, there's still this debate uh, in the U.S. The FDA thinks, you know, it's not really important for us to know, um, you know, what's on that label and be able to read what's in our food. Like, that's still a debate. Like, we might, you know, put all sorts of crap in there, but for some reason, we don't really have to put it on that label. Well, we know why. It's for business reasons. They don't want to lose money, but, but at the same time, it's just sad that, you know, we don't even have that option and we're not even told, we don't even uh, have the opportunity to know what's in our food unless we really like sit down and like Google the company and like look into the, all these things. It should be on the label everywhere across the country. It in is. the world, if, that, if that's For that the matter, case, yeah, yeah. yeah, I agree with you. These scientists, they use a metaphor. They use the metaphor of the Russian roulette. If you decide to go through life taking the risk, it's the same risk of having one bullet in the six chambers.